This week has gone inside Britain's biggest comprehensive to ask if schools should now go back to basics. In a classroom in a modern comprehensive school, pupils learn about the Industrial Revolution by reenacting conditions in a factory of 100 years ago. Teacher Luke Abbott believes that if children can identify with what they're studying, they will learn, and that this kind of classroom theatre is better than learning dates or doing spelling tests. I'm not against back to basics. I think it is an important skill. But on the other hand, I'm not into classes that have to be organised and regimented for those skills to be implanted in students. As we've got here, a half, half, half of the whole unit. A few miles away, a remedial class in basic arithmetic for 16-year-olds who left school this year. As we see that, one-eighth of the whole. These young people are training to be craftsmen and technicians. But according to the boss of the training centre, more and more school leavers are arriving without the maths that they need to even start his course. What's gone wrong, I don't know. All I know is the end product that we receive is seriously deficient in numeracy and literacy skills. As Britain's economic performance has faltered, the spotlight of blame has once again turned towards the country's schools. Are they giving their students the basic grounding that many employers say they want? A spate of recent surveys has suggested that in many parts of the country, standards of spelling, grammar and arithmetic have dropped. For their part, the teachers say that the whole nature of education has changed, and changed for the better. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. The next statement, you don't have to blow up my candle to make your school glow brighter. That's Stantonbury all Campus in the new city of Milton Keynes is a comprehensive school that's firmly committed to giving its pupils a modern education with the emphasis on producing confident, well-adjusted individuals. And who feels really comfortable in both Yes, great. <laughs> it is very, very unfair, I think, for anybody to reduce education to a series of tricks like training a baboon in a circus and then say, but they're not falling through their suit terribly well at the moment. Here in Britain's largest comprehensive school, this week has examined what the 16-year-old school leaver is learning and what he's not. Stantonbury, in fact, devotes much effort to persuading students to stay on after 16, but more than a third of pupils still go out into the marketplace at that age. Built in the 1970s, it's a school with excellent facilities and a team of teachers firmly committed to the comprehensive ideal. But in line with most of the other six comprehensive schools of Milton Keynes, its exam results at GCSE are well below the national average. Mike Davis is not discouraged. We see real hope in this country. We do not have low morale amongst our teachers. We do not have low morale amongst our students. We have a high attendance rate, very little truancy, very little problems of graffiti, or violence, or anything else. An institution of 2,200 students, a sixth form of 440 students. It's an amazing success. The world which greets the Milton Keynes school leaver is a great deal rosier than in many other parts of the country. The city, which boomed in the 1980s, is still generating more than 2,000 new jobs a year and has an unemployment rate of less than 3%. A recent study rates Milton Keynes as the country's most economically prosperous city. But the question is whether many of the city's young people are getting the kind of education that will equip them to take part in and sustain the recent prosperity. As I discovered, the worries about educational standards are shared by a number of top Milton Keynes employers, including the Abbey National. Each year, the Abbey National recruits a number of school leavers to fill junior clerical posts. This year, 25 trainees were selected by test and interview from about 200 applicants. Chris Kilby has just completed a two-and-a-half-year spell as personnel manager 
a time in which she has become increasingly concerned about the poor standards of literacy and numeracy among many of the young people emerging from the comprehensive schools of Milton Keynes. If we take, for example, the application for jobs, the forms that come in um, are untidy, the spelling is poor, and those are the things that get children shortlisted to come along for an interview. So um, one would expect there to be some care and attention put into those, and it seems as though the children aren't capable of producing anything better. Among the young trainees who got through the selection process this year was Matthew Smith, who came with eight GCSEs and a good reference from his school, Stantonbury. It was only when Matthew had to start taking details over the telephone that his new employers noticed that the young man had a serious problem with his spelling. I'll give you yes. the knowledge and experience. Matthew's spelling difficulties will no doubt be sorted out as he goes through further training with the Abbey National. But the fact they exist after 11 years of school education remains a source of concern for his employers and of embarrassment for Matthew. When I was at school, I've always...